Today on Coffee with a Googler, we're having coffee, cloud, containers, and a whole lot more with stand-up comic and developer advocate extraordinaire, Carter Morgan. So Carter, you've had so many roles like soldier, bartender, I hear you worked in a software company over in Redmond, blogger. <laughs> and what brings you to Google and what are you doing here now? Uh, well, I came because I wanted to be a developer advocate. I wanted to stop being a software engineer. Where was it? Other company in Redmond, wasn't it? <laughs> I know the one. You know the one? Yeah, I've been there too. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I wrote this like nine page cover letter to, to try and get in because they're like, you have no experience in this field. Uh, somehow they let me in. And now I get to, yeah, I get to run workshops and teach people how to use our technology with videos or workshops, blog posts. Right. It's really cool. Nine page letter. I did. It was literally like nine page. It was all Google colored and themed. It was horrible looking. <laughs> do, do you still have it? I do. I do. Is I still look like, at it time to time. Like, <laughs> it's framed in your office. Framed. Or? Yeah. <laughs> well, because, so like I wanted attention, right? I, I didn't have any experience in this role. So I did things like, I wrote a haiku in the middle, Okay. falsely attributed to Rob Pike. Okay. And it said something like, uh, you don't have to write long cover letters if your name is Rob Pike, sign Rob Pike, or something like that. <laughs> and someone that I interviewed with sent it to him, and I get this response back, and it said something like, uh, I don't know, ad, hom ad hominem arguments, poor and or con, or not convincing. And that's a haiku. Yeah, and I didn't realize it. I just thought Rob Pike was really mean, and <laughs> just dashed my dreams. <laughs> He's not mean. He's way above average. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's my bad joke for the day. So I'm the one making the joke, but you also do stand-up comedy, right? I, I dabble. <laughs> I try and do some stand-up, um, mostly in Seattle and whatnot. It's, it's been a real big help for the job, and like mm -hmm. speaking in front of people. Well, I don't have to be afraid anymore because I've been in front of drunk audiences or... <laughs> now, just given that you've done the stand-up comedy and like you weren't a developer advocate before and you wrote this big letter and that brought you into Google, how was it to fit into the role of a developer advocate? Uh, well, so I, when I first joined, I, I joined the DPE team. Okay. And so DPE are the people who build our sample applications, yes, right? Yes. So developer programs engineers. And uh, they're more internal facing. Right. And developer advocates are more uh, customer developer facing. And it wasn't a good fit. It was like a year that was really a tough fit. Because uh, I wrote this nine page cover letter, like, here's all the external stuff I do. And they're like, don't do that. <laughs> um, but Google was really flexible and they kind of worked with me to transition to this team. Right. Uh, so it's still, you know, finding your place. How can I be most effective? Uh, you get a lot of freedom in this role, which is, it can be terrifying when you like join a new company with all these oh, smart yeah. people. Like, Rob Pike works here, you yeah. work here. Um, they're like, oh, you so can pick I, what you I, do. I lower the average. So, so that's what it is. To balance it out with Rob, yeah. So that's the only reason they hired me. <laughs> so now, so you're, you're doing all this stuff, um, like outreach, that kind of thing. Now it's cloud that you work on, and mm -hmm. Kubernetes in particular, right? Yes. Uh, so the tool I've been focused on for the first year as at Google is Kubernetes, mm -hmm. and that's basically an orchestrator for containers or running applications. So how do you do that at scale? Right. Um, now that we've done that for a year, I'm uh, moving over into continuous integration and delivery which is like, well, how do you actually deliver software? How do you send updates out in a controlled manner, a deterministic way? Right. And so the tool we're focusing on right now, I am, is Spinnaker. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's been exciting too, because again, it's like every year, it's almost like you have to start from scratch and relearn a whole tool or platform or community. Right. But, and that's also what it's like for developers, right? With at the pace of technology going so fast, there's continuing pressure on them to keep their skills up to date. So people like you and me, our job is to get ahead of that and to, mm -hmm. to be ready to teach them and to be ready to you know, share our experiences. And it's one of the nice things is that you're not a salesperson, right? I'm not a salesperson. Um, and, and so that's really important. There's gotta be times sometimes where I say, I don't think this tool is the best. I don't mm -hmm. think this is the right way to do it. And I think that's something a salesperson couldn't say. They'd right. have to be like, you know, use this product no matter what, it's the best. Yeah, you don't have a quota to meet or anything. Mm -hmm. you, you love this technology and you get to share it with people. Right? 100. Now I know you have a new video series, the Cloud Rolling Update. Could you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, so the Cloud Rolling Update is a series where we show why Google Cloud Platform is the place to deliver code to and from. Mm -hmm. And so the first couple of videos are brief overviews of this tool called Google Container Builder. Okay. Uh, it's like a Docker tool, but you don't use it locally. You use it in the cloud. It's really cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then after that, we're going to talk about Spinnaker and continuous integration and delivery um, using Kubernetes. Okay. And so the idea is you have an application. Well, how do you update it? And we're going to show how to do that 
on, cool. on Google Container Engine, yeah. Now, I know you've brought a clip of the show with us. What's mm -hmm. this clip? So this clip is the first video in the series. It's where you'd probably get started. And it's just covering Container Builder. It's what is it? How do I use it? Oh, let's check it out. And on top of that, it's fast. It has support for custom build steps, which can be run concurrently. And there's support for using build triggers so that you can create images automatically. And all of this, all of this comes with full integration with Google Container Registry, the same service that's being used by Google Cloud Functions, App Engine Flex, and more. So let's see this in action. For example, if you already have a Docker file, you can just use it like you normally would to build a container image. Here you can see we have a standard Docker file. We're going to build our... In that video, you were talking about Container Builder. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm a developer and there's just this array of options in front of me, what's a good way for me to get started with this stuff to take advantage of it? Well, the first thing I would do is check out the link in the description. Uh, we've got tutorials and videos showing how to use the tool and why you want to. Uh, that's first. Uh, but you can basically... So Container Builder just replaces, on the cloud side, tools that are common to most developers, like Docker. Okay. So now instead of having to run it locally, you can just send that out to the cloud and run for you. Cool, cool. Yeah. Now, so in addition to all that, I know you've done like teaching through things like Udacity courses. Mm -hmm. You have right? too, yeah. I have, and they're, they're really fun because, I mean, well, has your experience been the same in mind that whenever you go to an event and you're talking, there's usually somebody goes, I know that face. Yeah, sometimes. I've had the opposite too. So I did this course with Kelsey Hightower. He's super popular. We all know Kelsey. We've had him on the show. He's mm -hmm. great. So we want, to have, um, we want to have him on the show again. Again? Okay. So just tell him we said that. I'll tell him. But so I was at a conference and someone came up to me and they're like, hey, have you seen Kelsey? And I'm like, uh, no, not yet. Is there anything I can pass along? And this person goes, yeah, I just wanted to tell him that the course was great. And I'm like, <laughs> I was in the course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but no, normally a lot of times people come and they say, thank you for teaching. Uh, right. They really like the guided progression through a topic right. and the really short videos instead of this like long overview. Because um, it's hard to sit and watch like 45 minutes on cloud. I love cloud, but it's right. hard to sit and watch 45 minutes on cloud. But three or four minutes of you, three or four minutes of Kelsey, and then a little quiz afterwards, that kind of thing. It also helps retain knowledge, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, yeah, so again, you're changing up like uh, the knowledge that's coming, the presenter, and so it's always engaging. And so I think that's the most important thing to think about, whether you're writing a sample or an article, is how can I engage people? How can I write this in a way that makes them want to reach the end and mm -hmm. don't feel overwhelmed to get started? So we spoke a little bit about the Udacity course, and I just realized it's like for a lot of people out there who don't understand what Kubernetes is, and it's really cool, but what is it? Yeah, I should have started there, huh? <laughs> um, Kubernetes is a container orchestrator. So a container is just a way to bundle an application, right? So you can run it anywhere, it's gonna behave the same. That works really well on one machine, but when you scale up to 10 machines, 100 machines, 1,000, mm -hmm. it doesn't scale as well. And so what you want is something to manage all that complexity for you. How, do, how does container A talk to container B? What happens if container B gets shut down? Do I want to manually go to a terminal and start it back up, check if it's up? No. Right. And so uh, Kubernetes is a container framework that sits on top of something like Google Container Builder or Docker right. uh, and runs these containers, starts and stops them, makes sure they're communicating, health checks, so much more off for you. So if I want to get started by putting together an infrastructure that uses that, where would I go? Uh, well, we have the Udacity course, which is free, three hours of training for myself and Kelsey Hightower. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Kubernetes.io, uh, which is a great start. Um, probably more links in the description. So. Okay, sounds good. Now, you mentioned Kelsey Hightower. And yeah. You get to work with some superstars here on Google, right? So I do. Uh, that's, that's probably my favorite part about being at Google, to be honest. Um, one, I get to work with people that are really intelligent. Part of the Cloud Rolling Update series is is taking things I've learned from other people, like Vic Iglesias, uh, Ahmed Balkan, Kelsey Hightower, and, and putting that in a video format for, for a different audience. There's that. I've also gotten a lot of mentorship from people like Kelsey, uh, Sarah Novotny, Colt McCandless. Wow, some good names there. Well, yeah, and, and it's cool because they've been so open. These are people that are established at a company like Google, mm -hmm. and they're still taking the time to say, hey, let me show you the ropes. Let me, let me help you. So, so when, when you wrote that nine-page letter, was that what you thought would end up happening? <laughs> you know, I had no idea. Uh, I had no idea. I'd never been to a company like Google, uh, like such a young and, and, and like open company. Right. And so, yeah, still learning how to, how to be a good Googler. You, you got to blog that letter. We all want to see it now. I have it. <laughs> if you want to see it, it's on, it's on Medium. All right. Oh, you yeah, have? It's on Medium. Oh, cool. I'll look, I'll look out for it. I'll send it your way. <laughs> Thanks. We'll put it in the links. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that we've seen, um, and even on, with people we've been talking to on the show, is that 
just 18 months or two years ago, cloud was always that thing that seemed to be in the future. Mm -hmm. But now it's like it's, it's almost the new normal, right? That if I'm a developer starting out today, it should be cloud first. Mm -hmm. It should be, you know, let's get going right now. And is there any advice that you give to developers starting out? Uh, for me, so the best thing that happened to me was, again, someone told me to learn this Kubernetes framework. And the reason why is it abstracted away all the behind the scenes. I didn't have to think about machines anymore. So I learned one API uh, that had years of Google's experience behind it. And then I could manipulate objects at scale. So that was really useful for me. And so now some people look at me and they say, oh, I'm an expert, you know, an expert. And I'm like, no, I got lucky. I learned the right tool first. Right. So for me, I would start off with learning how to uh, manipulate or use Kubernetes mm -hmm. and using that to think about how I think about distributed applications or cloud-based applications. Right. So you're able to do like programming at your desk, but expand that to cloud scale and to mm -hmm. Google scale in the cloud, which is just phenomenal. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy because like with Kubernetes, you can say something like Kubernetes run and it'll create some application instance for you. Then you can say Kubernetes scale that up, Kubernetes expose that so I can talk to it. And all the behind the scenes, the networking, the scheduling, uh, all that's taken care of. Right. And if, I was, if you're starting from scratch maybe two years ago, uh, you would have had to have done that yourself, all the steps. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of power in these platforms or these frameworks that abstract away all the under, underlying mechanics of working with cloud programming. Right. So you've gone from a guy writing a nine-page letter <laughs> to try and get into Google into one of the foremost recognized experts in cloud at Google. Great cloud series, teaching stuff on Udacity, and it's just, it's been a privilege to be able to chat with you today. So thank you so much, Carter. And uh, for everybody else who's watching, we've put the links in the description below. Carter's video course is a must watch. And if you want to learn about cloud and you want to learn about Kubernetes, check out his Udacity course as well. So thanks so much, Carter. Thanks, Lauren.